Now, building your custom house or buying a pre-existing home, what is the actual difference? So I went out and I found a perfect pocket where I could show you the blend between custom houses, additions, and an empty lot where you could actually make your dream home. Now, when we get into this video, I would like to get into financing, what it will take, expertise, uh, basically the process, and I have an eight point category process, how we can decipher whether it is better to build your custom house or to buy a pre-existing home already in an area like this. So as you can see, there's an empty lot behind me and there are all these custom homes. And across the street from here, someone is actually doing an addition. So what are the differences? Let's find out. Let's talk about that empty lot. I know it's overcast today, but you get the point. This is basically what it is. It's an empty lot. Usually empty lots like this uh, in Port Credit, Southern uh, Mississauga, they're, you know, you, they're serviced, uh, they have all the connections, and sometimes they even have the plans for you, the ar architectural drawings for you to actually to start building. Now, uh, when you get to uh, already developed properties, uh, they're like this, this is the neighbor, it's already developed, not for sale, obviously. This is more of a traditional look right across the street, semi-modern, and there's this lot here that has been sold recently. Uh, they have finished uh, their paperwork and all of that stuff, and they already started the process of actually developing. So those are, uh, those are the differences here. So you can buy something pre-existing, or you can get into this. So as you can see here, it's a construction site. Uh, people are trying to build their new dream home. And what is it actually going to take to build your dream home so let's get right into it now right. right behind me you saw that empty beautiful lot it is actually facing lake ontario it is a waterfront property next to it beautiful property custom made a few years ago next to it as well and i showed you this particular lot that someone is building their dream home as we speak now what is it going to take so number one i would say it's the financing. You have to be ready for a different style of financing, right? And then you need to acquire a builder that will take that project then to the city, all the paperwork. From my own experience, I know it is always easier said than done, but people are doing it. That means there's definitely value and there are different categories uh, when it comes to, to that particular value. And what are you expecting from this particular build. So when, when I talk to you about the financing, so between building a project, uh, a home from scratch versus purchasing a property, um, well, I would say secondhand or, or even a pre-built property, an existing property, it's a huge difference. By acquiring or buying a property that has been already built, you're going to the bank. The bank is evaluating through an appraisal that particular property and they will give you a mortgage, a traditional mortgage with a amortization of 25, 30, 35, whatever that ba bank uh, is willing to give you at that particular time and date. So it's a straight process. Uh, it's a traditional mortgage. You get your mortgage monthly, you acquire your home within 30, 60, 90 days usually is the closing date and you basically move in. So if you are happy with that particular build, the location, the lot, and you can do some minor customization on it, then go ahead and buy it. Now, uh, now where's the value in building a house yourself? And we will get into that because I have eight point category that I would like to decipher between a new build and something that you built yourself and a home that you purchase off the shelf. Now, uh, what you're building, you need uh, land financing. So a lot of people um, say, look, like how does this work? Well, basically you, you find a piece of land like this one um, and you just buy it out. Number one, you buy it out straight or you have some financing on it. So that's one. So the second one would be, you have to finance your labor which means 
that that's a construction loan. So usually those loans, they're short period of time loans that are between six months and 18 months. And then you are paying only an interest on that particular loan with the higher interest rates and you get your funds based on the delivery. So you say, well, that is kind of weird. Well, it's kind of not weird because uh, let's, let's just for argument's sake, let's just say there's a million dollars in the pot uh, that the bank is willing to loan you. Well, there's gotta be a process. Like if they give you a million dollars upfront, uh, they don't know what you will do with the money. You might go and buy a nice car with it or buy a yacht with it or spend it on your family vacation, etc. So they want to make sure that that loan that they're giving you will go towards that particular build. So there is a process, like obviously, you know, the foundation and all the piping, all the plumbing, all the electrical work, if need to be from the street, etc. Then that's one, one type of the loan. And then the second level, the second process is, you know, constructing uh, the actual structure, the bones of the home. And then you get the point as you go on, then the finishing, interior finishing, uh, closing up the walls, uh, finishing exterior, interior, and you build it up to the final stages where the actual property is completed and that particular property will be closed and brought to a traditional mortgage, right? So just make sure you keep in mind that with a process like this, uh, you will need a higher down payment and more money in order to do something like that. And you can also kind of imagine that at this point you're running like a corporation because you will be dealing with the city, you'll be dealing with the paperwork, you'll be dealing with finances, you'll be dealing with the builders, you being the developer, you have to be on top of that. You will have to have a timeline process because no bank will give you a loan and say, don't worry about it. Here's a 30 year loan and then just deal with it. It's not gonna happen, right? So they want to see a specific uh, a plan in place. Uh, what are you trying to build in this? And, and there are obviously setbacks when it comes to the city and different style. You cannot just build whatever you please, you have to go into the city. You, that's why it is important that you deal with a builder that has experience, right? Like that they have already done things like this beforehand and they can maybe guide you and give you some pointers when it comes to your build and the actual process. So furthermore, so uh, you know, like, like how does it work as we said, so three major things. Acquire land, second, secure a builder, and third, secure your architectural plans and submit it to the city, get the approval, and then move on, right? So now let's, let's, let us talk about the differences. Um, and, and, and I broke it into, into eight categories when it comes to actually purchasing a house right away and building your own house. So let's break it together let's rate it and let's kind of uh, at, at the end of this give it a score and announce the winner what i think from my perspective so number one is customization so listen it, it's a big topic and i think this topic requires a separate video but i would say when it comes to customization it is definitely the new home it's a winner hands down and you say, well, what if I can find something that it's already, you know, to my liking and it's already there? Well, there you go. So you found the jackpot, you buy it and it's done. But sometimes in particular areas, especially these more mature areas with the big trees and all of that stuff, you're finding uh, older properties with older styles. So one could be like eight foot ceilings. So what if you like high ceilings? So Let's say you find a property with nine foot ceilings and you're satisfied with that. You say, okay, so fine. It's not eight foot, it's nine foot. And I kind of like it, but you know, you want that, you know, grand entrance. You want that 20 foot high ceiling in the grand entrance. So what about now? So now, even if you buy that property, maybe you would have to knock uh, a bedroom above that entrance in order to create that space. 
And then you're dealing with the HVAC, you're dealing with the AC, you're dealing with electrical, you're dealing maybe with plumbing, you're dealing with all kinds of things. So it could be even, it could be costly and it will be costly because you don't know. As soon as you open that particular wall, you do not know what is behind that wall, right? So it gets a little bit easier if you have architectural drawings from that era, which is unlikely. But if you do, then it's, it's maybe a little bit easier if you know where the studs are, where, where, where certain things are, or if you hire a contractor that knows exactly what they're talking about, and it, it might help you basically, that's what I'm saying. But I think in, in, in this category, new home will definitely build because you are drawing it from scratch. You're putting your own, I would say even DNA, imagination, your own style and what you like. So it's a tailor fit. So I would say new build, definitely. So the second category, it's time frame. So this one, I, I think it's obvious at this point, like it's, it's buying like an existing home would definitely win at this point. But if you're looking at a time frame, so for example, uh, like let's just say like, um, I don't know, three and a half to 4,000 square foot home, okay, in Canada, right here where we're standing right now, I think it would uh, comfortably, I would say the process would be two years from start to completion. So now you can comment below if you think you can do it faster or if you think you need a little bit more time. Now, it also would depend on the style of home and it would depend on the finishes. But let's just say an average luxurious finish, I would say 3,500 to 4,000 would be between you know, a year and a half to two years, maybe even two and a half or whatever. So let's just give it an average of two years. A pre-existing home you can purchase and move in within you know, 60 to 90 days on average. So I would say existing home wins 1000% here. So the third one would be energy efficiency. So energy efficiency is something that uh, when you buy an elderly home at that particular time frame and that era, they, they would have certain criteria at that particular time. So as the time moves, uh, materials move, uh, different efficiency brackets move, because we are going towards the era of efficiency, obviously. You know, green homes, better windows, better flooring, better material, better insulation, um, cost efficiency. So on the long run, I would say definitely you building a home in today's time and age it will last you for a lot longer and you will save within a decade or two when it comes to energy efficiency. So I would say the new build definitely wins here. So now location. Uh, so this is definitely debatable. I mean, we're right here uh, in Port Credit. Uh, this is the southern part of Lakeshore, uh, looking at the Lake Ontario and stuff like that. This is triple A prime area. It is amazing. Now, what do you get in here? You obviously get the long trees, you get the, the streets, you get the heritage, you get uh, estate lots, you get all of the above. So I would say the existing home would win in this particular category because it is extremely hard to find a lot like this or a lot like this uh, that is empty and ready to build. It might even have architectural drawings. So what you will find, as you saw in the beginning of the video, you will find these elderly homes that you can do additions on. You can find these small bungalows and stuff like that, that you can, you know, tear them down and build your dream home that this area has been going through, you know, I would say probably two to three decades now. And, you know, some of these developers and builders are doing a fantastic job. So, but I would say overall, finding an existing property would be easier. So let's move to the next, repairs. I mean, it is debatable, but look, if you're building a, a brand new house at this point, uh, we can say that the new home construction will win because all the components and all the parts are up to date with the architectural, with the design, 
and obviously they're new so it is unlikely for something to break so with an existing home you might get into different things like you know roofs and chimneys and uh, eaves trough and soffit and siding and maybe broken brick and maybe broken stone uh, driveways uh, lawn uh, so, so the list is endless like you might have a swimming pool that's you know five decades old so what are you gonna do with it you're gonna fill it or you're gonna I don't know fix it gonna change the lining are you gonna dig it out put a new one so all these things are very costly extremely now like even getting into a fence like you know like I get it like we're talking about like three four million dollar you know investment at this point but even a fence now like a cedar fence can cost you you know fifty thousand eighty thousand a hundred thousand dollars to fence your in properly on your lot so all these things will add in a new build versus a existing property that already has all of these things in check so at this point i would say the new build for sure because everything is new and you're ready to go so next one would be the financing so i think at this point as i mentioned previous in the video i think the existing home it's a straightforward cut you go in you purchase the bank will evaluate that particular property they would give you the financing they will give you the money you go with a traditional mortgage with them with a amortization rate with the current uh percentage and rate at the bank and you're pretty much done you're moving in and you're partying you're happy right as we said with the new build now you're digging in and different types of financing and you gotta uh you, you know kind of sum it up at the end and you have to have an appraisal and then convert that into traditional or you kind of sell it for profit etc so i would say at this point uh it is definitely existing so safety look uh, it depends where you live and and where you actually build this property uh, i would say uh, this category is uh, definitely the, the new builds will win uh and because like if you're building like let's say a new build property beside a lake or beside a river or beside a mountain or in areas where where they have different weather conditions like you know tornadoes heavy snow etc right so uh, definitely the new builds will win because just from the architectural standpoint you can kind of uh, you know engineer that property to be safer than just something that existed there for you know 30 50 years and kind of some of these things were not uh, paid attention maybe at the time or they did not have these particular you know maybe ideas or materials or whatever so i would definitely say for safety it's the new build so now the cost the cost factor i mean like it's debatable as as, as we said i know from experience uh building a new property even if you have everything dotted like to to to, to the to the last square foot and i mean look please comment on this below if you ever done like this uh, anything if you if, if you ever renovated if you ever done an addition or if you ever built a new property so but in my my experience and my case like like it, it like whatever i drew down on piece of paper i always went above that threshold and i always wondered why like i mean like uh, why can i not sit down and have it down to the last penny well, it is simple because as you're building, different ideas emerge, right? Your ideas, your spouse ideas, your friends, the builder, the developer, right? Like, and, and, and it does make sense because like once the construction is going like up, like while, while you're progressing, you're like, okay, so look, the wall is open, might as well make a home theater oh, okay so now you get into cables and you get into power outlets and you get into structuring that particular do room to be a home theater well think about that like if you close all the walls and you finish everything that particular you know i would say room will be a lot more expensive if you would like demolish it later on and stuff like that and then like even like like things like a window like you know you planned to have like a you know five foot by a 10 foot window 
in that particular spot. But now as you're building, you're like, look, maybe if I just extend it a little bit higher and, and I widen it, I could have a better view of the lake in this case. So now that could be just like a $10,000 difference right there and then. So many things like, you know, adding heated floors in, in, in your washrooms, like uh, extending the back, doing um, a walkout in your basement. Like you didn't plan to, but then you decided, hey, look, you know, five of my friends told me so. Then you walked on the property, you said, well, everybody has one and I kind of like it, so why not? But that particular piece will cost you time, it will cost you money, architectural drawings, approvals, all of that stuff will cost you and then like the, the, the like 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 that 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 the jigging of the interior space will be affected because now you're opening walls and you're doing all kinds of things right and then if you get like if you for example have if your family like, like mine we're very uh, very innovative and we're very like design oriented and we like these things so as as I'm walking through through the property the ideas keep just flowing, right? And then it's like, ching, 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 like, like the money, like, so, so that's why. All of the projects that I have done, I went over budget. At the end of the day, I did, I, I'm not gonna say break even, I made profit by jigging some of these things. So just keep that in mind. With existing, I mean, like, look, if you're satisfied with everything, what the property has to deliver, right? ceiling heights, windows, floors, uh, lots, all of it, right? So you don't have to really do anything, but if you decide and you say, look, I wanna do an extension, right? Like I'm buying a 3,000 square foot home and I really wanted a 4,000 square foot home. So you need to add a thousand square foot, you know, like, like uh, on an existing property, but you really like that lot, that particular, pocket of the city that community that street so you kind of like you 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 dim down on on the initial purchase of three thousand but then you will upgrade it to your liking that can be also costly as we said you're opening up windows you're changing things you're living your life in a construction zone i went through it many times and it is fun believe me it is fun to go through it of you know, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, but then after a longer period of time, you get tired. You come home, you just wanna come home because it's your home and like you're in a construction site. Then be very careful who uh, you hire. Like the builder is an essential piece of a puzzle. Like you have to make sure that that builder knows what they're talking about, that they have the people. And most builders say, yeah, yeah, don't worry about that. Like I got plumbers, I got electricians, I got this, I got that. I got... They have everything in the book. Like they have everything. But when push comes to shove, they don't answer their phone. So just make sure you hire a reliable builder and a, or a developer who knows what they're doing, that can give you the right advice, that can be there for you, and they will answer your that they will answer their phone when you actually call them. Now, if I would say overall what I've seen, uh, I think the winner is definitely a new home for me. Uh, please comment below what you think. Uh, I think the last category of cost, I would rate it a tie because it can vary, but the winner overall would be a new property for me. Uh, please comment below. Uh, please share this video and share it to somebody that you know that is going through this particular hassle. It might actually help them and we might actually be able to find you the right people in, 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 in the field to actually guide you. So thank you all for watching. Please like, subscribe and share and see you all next time.